Hi, good evening everyone, it's Catherine from KISS, Key to It Simple for Success, coming to you um, this evening live in the KISS public group um, on day 12 of the May Challenge. Um, first of all, hi everybody, uh, lovely to see you. If you're watching this on YouTube, hi there, please subscribe to the channel. I talk an awful lot about the ketogenic lifestyle, weight loss, um, health, gut health, all that sort of thing. So please subscribe, drop uh, a little click on that notifications button. And if you really like what you see tonight, then please share this content on your social media so all your friends can see and they can have some um, knowledge about the, the sort of things that we're going to talk about tonight. So what is the topic? The topic is uh, weight loss stalls, plateaus, um, and problems losing weight on the ketogenic diet. So we're talking a little bit about how we can um, diagnose the issues with our, with our weight loss, um, how we can understand how to move forward and how we can keep the weight loss going really. So that's what we're talking about. We're also gonna talk about normal weight loss plateaus as well. So we, we're gonna talk a little bit about how weight loss occurs, what we should expect in terms of weight loss versus inch loss, those sorts of things, and we're going to take a deep dive um, into weight loss stalls. Now, it was actually our members group who decided the topic for, for tonight. Um, so, yeah, you've got them to thank for, for this information. They, they thought that this was a great topic for us. So we're going to have a good deep dive into it. It is live, so if you can see me, then do feel free to, to comment and uh, drop a little question or, or whatever as we go along. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to start talking. And um, hopefully, uh, you're either watching it live or you're watching the catch-up or if you're following the May Challenge, then these videos get uploaded onto YouTube and you can follow them there as well. If you are following along with the May Challenge, make sure that you've downloaded your uh, KISS approved food lists. The, 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 all the May Challenge um, resources are actually linked below. So if you want to follow along the May Challenge, you want to take that next step and really get uh, your weight loss going and you, you're really serious about a ketogenic way of life for, for health um, and, and to achieve your sort of health goals and your weight goals, then grab those resources um, and follow along. Um, if you're not a member of our Facebook group yet, why not? Crazy person, let's just get you in that group, get you talking to other people who are following this journey, losing weight, feeling fantastic, um, and you can share your, your challenges and your, your triumphs and everything else with, with people who understand the journey. So again, the link's below. Come and join us in the group. Okie dokie. So the first thing I wanted to talk about in terms of reasons that, that people would um, struggle with with weight loss. The number one thing I find when I talk to uh, my coaching clients or I talk to people who are following the 28 day plan, um, when we, we, we talk about their weight loss and they're struggling, the number one thing that comes up is hidden carbohydrates or lots of carbohydrates in the diet. Now, when you follow the KISS plan, the one thing that we don't do is we don't weigh our food and we don't track our food. So what we need to be very aware of, of which foods have high carbohydrates and which don't, which foods that we can assume are unlimited and that we can eat to hunger, and which are the foods that we need to be aware of that can actually trip us up if we're eating large amounts of those foods during the day or, or through the week. Um, so yeah, the number one thing, and the first thing that I will always check uh, when I'm doing a one-to-one -one session with someone is we will go through what they're eating, how often, how much of it they're eating. So we'll look at some of the foods that they should be eating in an in a unlimited way. So so things like fatty cuts of meat, oily fish, uh, the dark green leafy vegetables, things that have very, very few carbs. So your your fats, so your lards and your butters, uh, your beef dripping, things like that. We'll, we'll check that they are significant in the diet. Um, because if those carb-free foods are not significant in the diet, then the first thing that would indicate to me is, well, obviously this person is eating something, so potentially what is uh, making up a large part of that diet could have carbohydrates. So that's the first thing I will check. And some of the foods that I will look for is not just the 
the obvious things, the, the processed foods where all those hidden carbohydrates are, your mayonnaises and your ketchups and your sauces and your dressings um, and the packet food and, and everything else. Obviously, when we, we go on to the KISS plan, those sorts of foods should be coming away from the diet anyway. So they're usually not the things that, that um, people trip up on when they're eating uh, on the 28 day plan or, or when they're eating the, the KISS way of eating. So it'll be other things. For example, it will be vegetables that we can't really assume are unlimited. For example, I see a lot of people using things like celeriac and turnips um, and swede, we call it in the UK, Jimka, you call it in the US, um, and things like green beans um, and peas and all these things that, that's, you know, People assume because they're above ground or because they're vegetables, basically, that they are they are unlimited. Tomatoes is another one that I find. Peppers, onions, leeks, um, these sorts of things, which cannot be eaten un, in an unlimited way because of their carbohydrate count. If they're um, a large part of the diet, then obviously that's going to halt someone's progress if they're looking to be on this sort of um, very low carbohydrate ketogenic uh, diet. So they're the first things that I check with people is, are the vegetables that you are eating um, low carb enough. So as, particularly if someone's having uh, difficulty losing weight or they're in that weight loss stall um, and they're looking at their, their, their way of eating to try and get some indication as what the issues may be and how to sort those issues, have a look at your veg. Check that the veg Hi, Lynn. Um, check that the veg is very low carb, that it's the green leafy vegetables that are, that are so high in fiber that most of their carbohydrate count is, is just fiber. That's the type of vegetables that you want to eat in, un, you know, more unlimited, really. Um, and you can be more liberal with those vegetables. So just be aware um, that you need those really, really low carb vegetables. Higher carb vegetables can be in the diet, but you need to be aware that they are not something you can eat daily. They're not something you can eat in unlimited portions as well because of the, the, the amount of carbohydrate they contain. They can spike insulin um, and the body can use that to, to store glycogen and potentially body fat as well. So it's just to be aware of the amount of carbohydrates that's coming from the vegetables we're eating and to be aware of the types of vegetables that can be unlimited and that we don't need to worry about and the other sorts of vegetables that, that need to be um, more regulated, particularly when we're starting our ketogenic journey and if at any point we're struggling to lose weight um, or we're not achieving the sorts of, of things that we want to be achieving in terms of our blood sugar or our level of ketosis or our ability to fast, these things, you, you know, I would definitely have a look at the vegetables you're eating first. The second thing I would look at um, is the dairy products that you're using. Um, now, what I do find is that people who don't eat a lot of meat, don't eat a lot of animal fat, um, lean heavily on, on dairy. Um, now, the issue with dairy is, other than butter and ghee, um, dairy products contain carbohydrates. They still contain lactose and they can start to add up quite quickly. Um, so if you are using a lot of cream, a lot of yogurts, um, a lot of uh, cottage cheeses and, and the more sort of carby cheeses, so your ricottas and your mascarpones and, and things like this, the amount of lactose still in that product does allow those carbohydrates to stack up quite quickly. Um, so if you're leaning heavily on your cream sources and your cheeses and everything else, then potentially you are actually taking on quite a lot of carbohydrates still during the day. Um, so worth having a look at that and, and trying to see if that potentially we should be having more meat and more animal fat um, and less of, of the dairy products and the dairy fats um, because they come along with this carbohydrate as well, which, which, which we can have an insulin response to. Um, and also I find that um, dairy products is something that people um, for some reason tend to be able to eat more of um, than they would meat and, and fat. So not as self-regulating as the saturated fats in, in that, those animal products that, that we eat. So interesting, but dairy is definitely another thing that I would I would um, consider if you're you're eating a lot of that. Okay, the next thing, um, and 
you know, we, we think of nuts and seeds as being incredibly good for us. And they are. They, they have fantastic natural fat. They have fiber. They have protein. Uh, but they also have carbohydrates. Um, so we need to be aware of this. Um, some of the nuts in particular, especially things like peanuts, cashews, pistachios. I mean, cashews and peanuts aren't actually nuts. Um, but when we, you know, people assume that they are. So I would definitely look at the nuts and seeds that you're eating uh, because not only do they have good fats and they have proteins, but they also contain carbohydrates. So again, a portion of nuts is very small. It's, it's literally a, a, a tiny handful is, is a portion of nuts. So if you're eating a lot of nuts and a lot of nut betters and a lot of seeds and a lot of breads made out of seeds and nuts and everything else, then very quickly the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating during the day is stacking up. If we're not tracking, which we don't on the KISS plan, we want to eat instinctively and we want to find a way of eating which allows us to be free um, of, of tracking and weighing food, then we do need to be very aware of the amount of nuts and seeds that we're eating because the amount of carbs will very, very quickly um, start to, to increase. So nuts and seeds is not something that we can eat um, unlimited amounts of. Again, if someone's eating a lot of nuts and seeds, then it's understandable if, for example, they don't eat meat. But if you do eat meat or you do eat poultry or you do eat fish and you do eat eggs, then definitely lean heavy on those types of foods because they have much lower in carbohydrates. And if you're basing your meal on, on uh, meat and um, animal fats and eggs, um, then you're going to be able to get your protein and your fat without the carbohydrates that come along with the nuts and the seeds um, and the starchy vegetables and, and, and all of those things. So, um, yeah, so if someone asked me today, is all I eat meat? Um, yeah, <laughs> a lot of it is. Um, and the more meat I eat and the more more fish and, and, and good fatty poultry and, and high quality animal products I'm eating, the leaner and stronger and healthier I am getting. I, you know, there's there's no there's no other way to to describe what is happening to my body. You know, I've been at goal weight now six months, um, but during those six months, my diet has become cleaner and more um, towards the sort of um, very primitive foods that that humans would eat. So it is definitely more meat, fish, eggs. Um, poultry and animal fats. It, it is definitely. However, I can only say that since then, my circulation has improved. Um, you can start to see muscle definition on, on my body even without exercise. Um, I've got I've, I've got veins and and you know the the body is is becoming even more healthy. Even though I've been at goal weight for six months. Uh, there's still changes going on as I'm going he more heavily into, into this ketogenic uh, lifestyle. So yeah, definitely nuts and seeds, something to look at and something to be aware of, um, that it's not something that we can eat um, in unlimited amounts because not only do they have fantastic um, fats and fantastic protein, but they also do contain carbohydrates. So be aware that that could be potentially holding you back. Um, and if you are still eating um, peanuts, then just be aware. Hi, Lynn. Eat fish. Yeah, absolutely. So Lynn is saying that this is difficult for her. Um, she only eats fish and a small amount of wild meat. Um, but you're right. Um, I now only eat four ounces of cheese a day, two tablespoons of cream a day. And I was eating loads more than that. Absolutely. And so was I. I was I was really leaning quite heavily um, on the, the dairy products for, for both my fat and my protein. Um, but I think now that I've gone more towards, um, and, and I know we've, we've discussed this, haven't we, in, in person, that, um, you know, I would I would love to be able to to eat my diet on just uh, wild caught meat. That would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just it's just something that I've observed, I guess, as I'm as I'm going on this journey, um, that the more I go towards um, the hunter gatherer diet, um, the the, the fitter and the stronger and the healthier my body is getting. So it's definitely an indication to me personally, just going on my own observations of my own health, um, that, you know, maybe I am designed to to um, eat what, what's in my environment. Okie dokie. 
So we'll move on from the carbohydrates then because that's the number one thing. So the first thing I'm going to do if someone comes to me for a one-to-one -one session or they're coming to me um, with, with a question or they emailed me, the first thing I'm going to do um, is go through what they're eating to, to discover really the amount of carbohydrates and the numbers of different carbohydrates that, that's coming into to that, that diet because insulin is going to be the number one thing that prevents people um, from losing weight. So we're going to have a look at that first. Um, the second area where, where people struggle is literally just, <laughs> hi Louise from Australia, oh my goodness, are you up early to see this? <laughs> it's lovely that you've joined us, it's, um, it's, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, quite a chilly day here Louise, I'm sure it's much better where you are. Um, anyway, so we're talking about uh, the, the next thing then. It's the person's metabolism. Um, often, when um, someone comes to, to the keto lifestyle or they, they come into the KISS way of eating, they've often dieted before. Um, and usually, this has had an impact on their metabolism. And if someone's done a, a low calorie diet or a low fat diet or basically a low energy, diet previously, then potentially their metabolism um, is slow. Um, because as we know, when we drop our, our calorie intake for any significant length of time, just a couple of weeks, um, then the body will compensate by just lowering the metabolism to make sure that, that we stay at that even keel because the body always wants to stay the same weight. Uh, we have to actually make an effort to, to make the, the body lose weight. So it will and drop the metabolism. So if someone's coming to keto and they've previously um, been on a low calorie diet or a low fat diet, then they could be coming in with a slow metabolism. So when they first start keto and we tell them to eat plenty, then the first thing before the body starts to lose weight, the first thing that needs to happen is the metabolism needs to come back online. And that can take a while. So sometimes when people um, plateau after that first initial uh, fluid loss in the first two weeks, they then go into a bit of a plateau and that's because their metabolism is going to take a while to start coming back online um, and being able to, to, to burn the amount of fuel that we're asking it to burn. Um, so sometimes all we're doing is waiting for the metabolism to catch up um, and to heal um, and to get used to this, this higher energy diet that, that we're providing it. Um, and what the body will do before it starts to lose weight um, is heal all the internal organs and start to heal the metabolism and our hormones and our glands and, and, and things like that. So sometimes that slow weight loss during, during those first few months sometimes um, can be uh, just the metabolism having to wake up a little bit and it does take time. It took a, it took a while for that metabolism to get damaged. And sometimes it takes a while for the metabolism to come back online as well. So um, sometimes those, those plateaus are, are not necessarily anything to do with keto. They're to do with metabolism. And it does take a while for it to come back. How do we heal a metabolism? Well, we eat. And this is how we, we heal a metabolism. So we make sure that we are providing uh, the, the amount of, of energy that the body needs. Um, so we, we're eating the fats, we're eating the protein, and we're giving our body not just fats and proteins and carbohydrates, but we're also giving it the micronutrients, so the minerals and the vitamins it needs to start healing the, the internal organs um, and to start reassuring the body that we're no longer in this period of starvation. Um, and that should allow the body to increase its metabolic rate, increase our um, internal temperature, and to start to spend energy on some of the non-essential body functions, such as growing your hair, making your skin um, glow and, and be really healthy, um, brightening up your eyes, even changing the color of your eyes, which I think is, is amazing, but basically getting our bone density back, 
um, curing the, the, the fatty liver that we have, um, starting to work on our pancreas and reducing our insulin resistance. There's so much work that we need to do and we need to provide the body not just with the, en the, the physical energy to do it in terms of calories, but also with the nutrition it needs, the vitamin K, the vitamin A, the vitamin B, the vitamin D, the omega-3 fatty acids, all these things that need to be in the diet to put us back into to good health. So sometimes when people come to me and they've plateaued or they're, or they're not yet losing weight at the rate they want to, we need to go through some of the, the non-scale victories, we call them, the NSVs that they're experiencing to explain that before the body releases its body fat, it's going to do a little bit of healing first and it's going to put you in a really good state before it's reassured that it can drop that, that body fat as well. So, um, yeah, we do have to feed the body to actually help um, bring our thyroid back online, uh, to bring our glands back online, to reduce our insulin levels. We do have to feed the body. Okie dokie. So slow metabolism is definitely an issue. And uh, you'll know this is you because you will have been on Slimming World or Weight Watchers or uh, Rosemary Connolly or Slim Fast or, well, we could go through them all, couldn't we? But the low calorie diets, if you've been there um, for any length of time, if you've done them for more than a couple of weeks in the past, then potentially your metabolism is your current issue. Um, and it will take time. However, feeding the body and bringing the, those glands back online, bringing the metabolism back up will eventually work. Okay, so we'll move on from metabolism then um, to our next port of call. Um, my next port of call is inflammation. Um, now, when we are inflamed, uh, the body traps a lot of fluid um, and sends a lot of cells around the inflamed part of the body to, to help try to heal that part of the body. And if we are chronically inflamed, then we will start to hold on to a lot of water um, and a lot of sort of scar tissue and things like this around those, those areas of inflammation. So how will you know that this is an issue for you? Um, um, if you are still eating processed foods, so you're still eating sweeteners or um, preservatives, or you're still eating um, things that have inflammatory oils, um, or if you have anything like skin conditions, arthritis, asthma, food intolerances, allergies, these are all indications that somewhere in the body um, is inflamed. If you've got joint pain or headaches or, or these sorts of things, then there's a really good indication that there's inflammation in the body. So you're holding on to water around these inflamed parts of the body um, and ultimately your, your, your system is having difficulty in healing those tissues. Um, so inflammation can stop us. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, yeah, so... So yeah, inflammation can be a, a bit of an issue. So what are some of the things that we can do? If inflammation is perhaps one of the things that, that is holding our weight loss back, and, and believe me, it held me back at one point um, because I, I ditched the carbs um, and I'd started to lose weight and I'd lost water and I was starting to burn fat, but I came to a bit of a plateau. Um, and at that point is when I started to look at what I was eating rather than just how much of it. And once I started taking out the inflammatory foods, again, I had this massive acceleration in weight loss. So definitely does happen. And one of the, the things that we can do is look at what we're eating, not just how much of it. And this is where the difference between a keto lifestyle and a low carb lifestyle really comes into its own. When you get the idea around the keto lifestyle, removing some of these foods which cause inflammation, then you start to see the sort of transformations that you see when you see people's keto face pictures. Um, now, I know that um, Cheryl's posted a, a, a keto face picture very, very recently. I know Terry posted one in the members group as well. Um, and I'm sure you've seen the, the difference in my face um, as I've gone through my journey as well. Um, and it's literally that the, that's all the swelling and the inflammation starts to, to leave and you start to see the, the person's structure, the, just the, the structure of their body, um, rather than just this puffy, fluid-filled um, bag, really, which is, which is what I ended up being. So we remove inflammation by starting to remove inflammatory foods from the diet. 
we're talking about getting rid of grain. Now, there's a difference between eating products which are low carb and removing grain from the diet. So you'll have a lot of process, what's Louise, collect dairy, I think that might be a problem, yeah. Well, Louise, for some, some people it is an issue, for other people it isn't. Um, and there's only one way really to find out and that is to, to spend a week or so dairy free um, but you know for me it never was dairy was never an issue but we have much better dairy in the UK than other people do um, so the ad additives in the dairy definitely make a difference and how the cows are fed makes a difference so we're gonna we're gonna briefly talk about that but getting rid of grain is the number one thing that you can do to help reduce inflammation in the body and grain is in everything if you think of how many things have corn starch or uh, wheat starch or um, oat bran or um, rice flour there's so many different things that that have grain in them um, so removing those last processed foods which have the grain ingredients in could make a significant difference um, on your weight loss, on your health, how you look, how you feel, your energy levels. And I would definitely say if you're still eating processed foods, um, then it's definitely something to look at. If you're if you're, still, you're not getting the weight loss results that you want, um, even though you are low carb and, and you're, you're, you're not eating very many carbohydrates, then it could be the type of carbohydrates that you're eating and the type of food. So get rid of the grain. Um, the next thing to have a look at could possibly be dairy. What's Laura said? Been strict eater for eight months now, only lost 30 pounds, but I went down from a size 22 to a 12. That is amazing. Well done, Laura. And it just goes to show, we're going to talk about the difference between keto and other ways of eating in terms of what it does to our body composition. Because this month, um, I actually put on a pound and lost half an inch off my waist um, because I, I gained muscle mass. So very interesting, very interesting that, that the scale lies um, when you're eating like this. Anyway, so dairy then. Dairy can be an issue for, for some people um, and it will depend on your tolerance to um, the, the lactose, it will depend on your tolerance to the casein protein that's in the milk um, and it will also depend on whether that um, dairy is pasteurized or raw and whether it has come from a cow which has been grass fed or, or grain fed. Um, so there'll be lots of different um, factors into whether dairy is an issue for you or not. The way to test this is to go dairy free. Um, to give yourself a week, two weeks maybe without the dairy products in the diet, make sure that you, you put uh, the calories that you're missing back in. So you're going to need more coconut oil, you're going to need more um, olive oil, you're going to need more um, fats and, and protein from, from animals. So things like lard, your belly pork, your, your oily fish, that sort of thing. So you're going to need to replace them um, with other fats and proteins, but you can take that dairy out and see. Do the test on yourself because the only one who's going to be able to, to tell you whether dairy is an issue is either you get an intolerance test, but they're expensive, or you just remove it from the diet and see what happens. So you can do that test on yourself. Um, nothing bad will happen to you if you give up dairy, um, but you need to make sure that you, you do replace them with, with other good things. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Um, okay, so um, dairy would be the other thing. Um, inflammatory oils are a huge one. Um, things like your canola oil, called rapeseed oil in the UK, um, your sun, uh, sunflower seed oils, your um, soya oils, your corn oils, these sorts of vegetable oils are highly inflammatory, particularly when they've been heated up. They, they let off free radicals, which, which damage cells and cause huge amounts of inflammation in the gut, um, which obviously means that we store a lot of water, we don't digest things properly, um, and ultimately um, it, it affects our weight. Um, and if anyone saw uh, in the members only group the, the video that we did on the gut health and microbiome, we really took a deep dive into what happens when we, when we have inflammation in the gut um, and how that impacts our weight. So inflammatory oils, definitely one to take out. Nuts can be an issue for some people. Uh, the peanuts and cashews, definitely, because they're not even nuts um, and can be highly inflammatory for some people. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the sort of things that, that we know are not keto foods. However, we allow them um, in our diet um, 
they're, they're the things that I'm talking about here in talk, talk, terms of inflammatory stuff. So uh, your your diet sodas and, and your sweetened treats and, and all this sort of stuff, they're potentially causing inflammation in the body. So um, if you're looking to, to take them out, then potentially you could start to achieve the sort of weight loss goals that, that you're looking for and you could break that storm. Okay, so I'm just going to drink of water because I've gone all dry. Oh, okay, so next thing then, um, I will always ask people, how long are you spending during your day um, burning body fat? And they'll say, what do you mean? And I'll say, well, when we eat, for the six hours after that we eat that meal, uh, if, if not eight hours, depending on how much we ate, the body will be burning our food. So how long in your day do you spend actually burning body fat rather than dietary fat? Because that that's, plays a huge role um, in how much uh, weight we're gonna lose and, and how much our insulin is gonna fall overnight and things like this. So it's, it's really, really big. We should have this, this fasted period where, where the body is not being constantly fed and we're not grazing, we're not snacking. Um, so if someone's in a weight loss stall, um, then as you know, if you've done the, the stall breaker plan or you've seen it in, in the group, um, it's two meals a day, it's no snacking, and those meals are between four and six hours apart. Um, what that does is allows the body um, plenty of time to actually start to dig into the, the body fat, to reduce the amount of insulin you're, you're producing, and to actually go into that fasted state, start to produce some human growth hormone, and start to break down um, the, the cells of the body and, and start making you ultimately smaller. Um, so Laura says, if you do accidentally take in something that's made you inflamed, is there any way to speed up the healing process? Yes. There is. Fantastic question. In fact, you need to start to um, take in inflammatory foods. So basically the opposites of, of what you're eating. Um, and my fit, two favorites are omega-3 fats um, and green vegetables, which are, you know, can be anti-inflammatory as well. But bone broth is my number one thing for reducing inflammation. Um, it's really anti-inflammatory because if you think of what a bone is made of, and I've actually got huge, great big fat marrow bones um, in, in a pot in my kitchen at the moment, um, but they're full of cells and, and the products of cells which actually fight inflammation in the body. So if you're looking for a way to, to heal a sore throat or to reduce inflammation in the gut, then your daily dose of bone broth is definitely absolutely the way to, to help prevent uh, any more inflammation. So it's omega-3, so your oily fish or your, you know, a wild caught oily fish is really important because farm salmon is just gross. Um, so oily fish or your omega-3 supplements because Let's face it, some of us don't eat enough oily fish to get our omega-3s. Um, and yeah, definitely the bone broth is, is one of the best things um, in terms of nutrition that I have ever added into my diet. Um, I, can, I can say to you now that the reason I look this good <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I am a bit chuffed about it. Uh, the reason I look like this is, is bone broth. I think otherwise, if I hadn't been drinking bone broth every day, I might look a bit haggard uh, after losing all that weight. Um, do I like it plain or do I get the same results from putting it in soups? You get exactly the same results from putting it in soups. You don't have to drink it plain. Um, but I do. I, I actually really, really like it. And uh, the one I've got on, on the hob at the moment, I've actually got oxtails in there as well. So there's actually going to be bits of beef um, in, in the bone broth. So it's going to be like an oxtail soup, um, which is going to be really, really tasty. So I'm, I'm going to enjoy that. Um, but yeah, you can you can check it in a soup as a stock and you're still getting exactly the same um, good stuff that you would if you just drank, drank the stuff to begin with. So, yay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Lots of people are glad of that because they can't just can't stomach it. But I absolutely adore it. Um, it's something it's something to do with like when I was um, a little kid, my dad used to make me bovril, which is like um, a beef concentrate in a jar that you just add to hot, I don't know if you have it in the States, but it's just a beef concentrate that you add to hot water and it makes like a, a beefy drink or something or other, it's a bit weird, a um, bit like putting a stock cube in, in some water, I guess. 
Um, and it just, I don't know, there's something about it that's very nostalgic to me and it just reminds me of my dad um, of, of doing that. Yeah, happy birthday to Cheryl too. <laughs> I'm hoping you're having a really good birthday and I'm not keeping you from uh, from your celebrations. Okay, um, so we've gone from inflammation then and this takes us on naturally to another reason that we would struggle to lose weight and that is our microbiome. If we, um, if, if you've read the blog, you'll know that three quarters of us is our microbiome and only one quarter of us is actually our own cells with our own genetic code. Um, so three quarters of us is these microbes and the health of these microbes and the species that we're hosting um, is really, really important for, for our weight set point, our insulin resistance um, and our ability to lose weight. If we are um, severely impacting our microbiome with um, processed foods, antibiotics, um, omega-6 fats, um, free radicals, sweeteners, um, chlorinated water, you name it. If we're, if we're fighting against our microbiome, we're going to start to, to um, not have great uh, bacteria and we're going to have a lot of yeasts um, and we're going to have a, a microbiome that, that keeps us um, insulin resistant, that keeps us craving sugar. So you need to look after your microbiome. The way you do that in very simple terms, you stop putting uh, chemicals and processed foods in your body you replace some of the good bacteria by either eating fermented foods or um, a good probiotic. And you either feed your body with fiber from vegetables or you um, have high ketone levels. So if you're not eating a lot of vegetables, and I, you know, I'm, I'm very open-minded to a carnivorous ketogenic lifestyle because ultimately the research I've seen shows how advanced you know how many advantages there are to it so you're either eating fiber from your your greens or you're following a very healthy carnivorous ketogenic diet where your ketones are very 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 high because the ketones will feed the bacteria instead um, but ultimately we've got to stop putting things in the kill bacteria um, and we've got to start to provide good bacteria um, and food for the bacteria it's either fiber from green vegetables or um, it's ketones so they'll feed off either. So Louise said, we have concentrated broth from health food shops in Australia, but it's pretty expensive. Um, I make my own. Um, I've, got to, I've got to be really honest. I bought oxtails today and they weren't cheap. Um, but normally I buy, a chi you know, I have a full chicken on Sunday. I use the carcass for, for my bone broth. It costs me nothing extra um, from that meal. So I tend to store bones through the week. So if we've had pork chops or we've had chicken wings or chicken leg or whatever it, it may be, I store up all those bones for, for a Sunday. So after my dinner, when I've got chicken carcass, um, I, I make my broth. It doesn't actually cost anything um, it's just time and well I say time is sat there on its own there's nothing to do with it it's just sitting there um, so I would definitely say that it is something to to make at home um, however this is top secret but I'll tell you guys um, I was talking to someone who has a kitchen and um, I'm really really interested in making broth for people because um, lots of people can't can't be bothered or they're a bit icky uh, with bones but but I think there's definitely you know it is as, as far as I'm concerned a little bit of a superfood um, and in fact in in the the more I look into it the more of a superfood I, I realize it is um, and the more important it is for for gut health and for our skin and for our immune system and everything else is to get those those collagens back in um, and the minerals and things so okay I'll move along from broth because you know you all know I love it um, okay, so the next one then, what else could be affecting us? Well, our hormones affect us. They affect us hugely. Um, and again, if, if you were part of that members only um, video, you'll know that our microbiome, so, so the gut bacteria and all the microbes living on us are listening to the body's hormone signals um, and responding to it. As well as them responding to it, um, our own glands respond to lots of different hormones and, and all the organs in the body are, are, are run by these hormonal signals. So if our hormones are out of whack, 
um, then our ability to, to produce insulin or reduce insulin, our ability to release glucagon, which is actually our weight loss hormone, um, our ghrelin, which is our hunger hormone, our leptin, which is our uh, satiety hormone, all these things can get really, really thrown out of whack. So the type of hormones that, that will throw them out of whack um, are, are stress hormones. So if we are not sleeping correctly, if we're under um, chronic stress, if we're having difficulties um, in our relationship or our work life or wherever it may be, these hormones can play absolute havoc with our metabolism, which is which is just crazy, but it's but it's very true. So sometimes, if we've checked that there's no carbohydrates and we check that the food is great and everything else, then the next thing I'm going to look at is lifestyle um, and whether someone is giving themselves enough sleep and enough care and enough um, stress relief to actually would start to reduce down the stress hormones so that the me metabolism can start speeding up. Um, because this, this fight or flight response, this chronic stress switches off the digestive system, meaning that we don't digest things properly, but we also um, try to store our fat as well. We keep our blood sugar really, really high. Stress horm hormones keep blood sugar high. And of course, blood sugar keeps insulin high so we keep storing all this this um this fat uh, and preserving the fat as well because we are stressed and we have these stress hormones going on so lifestyle can be a, a massive factor um with weight loss stall and and the the um the speed at which we we can lose weight um, so yeah, other things then, we know that our sex hormones can, can have an issue, uh, can play a part. I know for me, I have a five pound fluctuation during the month, uh, which is perfectly normal. And I do tell people, if you know you're going to weigh more, just don't weigh <laughs> because, you know, we know our hormones do that. And of course, then we go through um, menopause and that has an impact because we have a reduction in estrogen um, and fat um, composition and fat um displacement changes around the body we have more abdominal fat after menopause than we do uh, beforehand and the the composition of the, the the body changes our density changes um but these hormones there's only so much we can do about them um, and luckily uh, the ketogenic lifestyle does support um, normal hormone function so time again is a good good healer when it comes to hormonal imbalances but you can also look at things that uh, support your hormones like flaxseed your omega-3 your vitamin d um, and of course all your minerals as well are really really important um, but definitely look into omega-3 so you make sure you're getting enough of that and vitamin d again really really important in terms of hormone production um, and really important in terms of bone density which when we when we start to age is vastly important um, in terms of our mobility and in terms of our general health as well so okay so hormones definitely play a part and we need to relax and sleep um, and exercise and do the things that we know that reduce stress because um, they can massively have an impact on, on the weight that we lose. Okay, so another thing that can, can affect um, weight loss then is medication. Again, there may be not very much we can do about it. However, uh, there's always a second opinion. There's always other options when we're talking about medication as well um, to, to think about. Um, but normally, regardless of what medication you're taking, if you are spending enough time fasted, if you're um, you're eating instinctively and, and not overeating on high carbohydrate sort of foods, um, then you will lose weight regardless of medication. It may be slower, don't get me wrong, and hormones will have this effect as well. It could be slower, but you will lose weight regardless of medication, unless your medication is... is um, I don't know, 100 grams of sugar a day or something. Um, so it will happen. So just, just be patient. Um, and the last thing then is electrolytes. If we're not getting our electrolytes right, then potentially we're doing things like um, retaining water. Uh, we're having sluggish digestion. Um, and of course, any sluggish digestion and, and constipation can lead to uh, slow weight loss uh, because of the toxins and, and the inflammation in the gut of just having that, that um, matter in the gut for a long period of time. So getting our electrolytes all, all messed up can have an impact on our weight loss. So we need to think about um, 
read the, well, read the blog basically on electrolytes and make sure that if you've got any symptoms of, of having your electrolytes off, that you're, you're looking into ways to, to put that right. You could be requiring um, sodium. You could be requiring potassium more likely than sodium because, so, you know, salts and everything. Um, and you could be um, deficient in magnesium as well or even calcium. So have a look at the blog um, and do check your, your electrolyte levels. If you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, then you probably do need to read the blog um, because the ketogenic lifestyle is is one that is um, we've removed a lot of the processed foods which which um, which have uh, fortification in them a lot of the time um, and it's a natural diuretic so when you're in ketosis you you naturally hold on to less fluid in the body and when we do hold on to less fluid sometimes we can flush electrolytes out as well so um, if you're not conscious of, of electrolytes if you're not thinking about potassium magnesium sodium and calcium in your diet then it is time to think about those things because if you're, if you're struggling to lose weight or you're having symptoms and you're not feeling great on keto then the number one issue is electrolytes so do go and read the blog um, again uh, the blog is um, below on the on the description of the video Okie dokie. Um, so yeah, they're the main things that when someone comes to me um, during their one-to-one -one session that we talk about. Um, and I'll just summarize them. So it's insulin first. So we look for the carbohydrates in the diet. It's not just the obvious things. Um, it's also the amount of dairy, the amount of vegetables they're eating, nuts, the seeds. Um, these all, all these things start to add up. You know, if, if people are eating um, a keto bread and pancakes, um, they're eating a lot of cheese, they're eating a lot of nuts, they're eating a lot of um, cream. They are all ketogenic foods, don't get me wrong, but when you eat all of these things in one day, then the amount of carbohydrates that you're getting is probably um, too high. So we need to make sure that people are leaning more heavily on the carb-free foods um, if they're looking to lose weight. Second thing then will be metabolism. If someone's coming to me and they've been on diets before, then I know I'm going to be fighting against a potentially slow metabolism. So we need to get that metabolism back up. And I do that through, through recommending someone eats, um, not just um, eats ketogenically, but eats plenty um, and also looks at nutrient dense foods to start um, healing the, the metabolic organs in the body. So we're talking about the thyroid, we're talking about the, all the glands, um, and we're talking about the whole digestive system, the microbiome and everything. So we're looking to, to replenish those organs through the body um, in an attempt then to build that metabolism back up so that when that person goes into a fasted state, they're burning fat at that fast rate. Um, they're not just holding on to it because they've got a slow metabolism. Okay, so the, the third thing then was inflammation. Um, and we talked about taking inflammatory foods out of the diet. The a ketogenic diet is, is different and the KISS plan is definitely different uh, from a low carb um, diet because we remove the inflammatory foods. We talk about fasting. How much time do you give your body burning body fat? Um, now, I know that when we start the ketogenic diet, I personally don't recommend fasting at all. However, if you're in a weight loss stall or you've gone through the whole the removal of carbs and, and you, you're now just looking to accelerate the process, then this is the question you need to ask yourself. How much time are you giving your body burning body fat? Now remember, you'll only burn about half a pound of fat in a day. Um, so if you're if you're not spending any time fasted at all, uh, then this is why you're having slow slow weight loss because you're not giving you, you, your body any time to burn it. Um, the microbiome then, so we're talking about gut health. Uh, definitely look at the blog on that. That's all right, Louise, you carry on. That's fine. Um, I'll see you again, hopefully. Um, so medication, electrolytes, hormones, these are the things that I, I would talk to you about. Um, so if you want to spend an hour really diving into your personal situation and why you're, you're struggling to lose weight or that you're at that plateau, we're going to talk about what's a normal plateau because obviously the, we don't lose day in, day out. That, that's, that's not necessarily the case. But if you're really struggling, if it's been four weeks, six weeks 
um, and potentially you've gained weight or you haven't lost any weight and you've got a lot of weight to lose because believe me if you don't have much weight to lose then it's not going to happen quickly but if you've got a lot of weight to lose and it's just not coming off there is a reason because keto works um, you know ultimately if you spend time burning your body fat um, and when you are feasting you're not spiking your insulin so you're not storing any fat you're just spending time burning it then this will work um, so we're going to have a look at your personal situation work out what the factors are that are, that, that are impacting that and put it right so we're, we're going to do that together so if you want to do that with me let me know um, so yeah, we're coming to the end now of, of our day 12. Um, and I hope you found that that interesting and enlightening and um, gives you some indications as to, to why you could experience a, a stall in weight loss and some, some tips about what you can do to put that right. Um, tomorrow, again, I'm going to be asking the members only group. Um, I'm going to give them three options of what we're going to talk about. So who knows what, what it's going to be tomorrow. Um, but we're carrying on with our main challenge. And again, if you're really enjoying this, this content, join the main challenge, share it with your friends, um, give them access to the, the, the kiss food lists and access to the content. Um, and let's change the world one meal at a time. Let's, let's make our friends and our family um, and our colleagues and everybody else as healthy and as strong and as physically capable and able to fulfill their potential as possible. Because um, this is my mission. I want to make everyone like proper superhuman. I want to put humans back to the, the state they were in when, when they invented fire, when they invented the wheel, when we built, um, you know, when we built huge civilizations because we were, we were firing on all cylinders um, and I just wish that, that we could give that to our children and we could give that to the next generation and show them that that, that the power of, of their body and their mind when you just rid it of the rubbish. Anyway, that's me. Um, good night all. Please, please, please join me tomorrow and uh, yeah, have a good weekend. Bye.